Hello, my name is Stiley Hayward, and I would like to welcome you to the Blessed Hope Ministry. We are a King James Grounded Family Bible Study. These lessons are not to be a substitute for regular church attendance. Nightly, I direct my family through the Bible by chapter and verse. We request you to join us and to study from God and His Son, Jesus Christ. You may have permission to like, send, or encourage our studies with family or friends. Edification of what God has and what He desires in our life. Study to show thyself approved unto God. A workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly divine the word of truth. You may use our studies, but I request that you do not abuse them. For YouTube videos, subscribe below for more videos. And place the thumbs up and leave a comment or email me. Thank you. Numbers chapter 6. The Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, Say unto them, When either a man or a woman shall separate themselves to vow a vow of a Nazarite. Let's go to Matthew 2.23. Uh, quite error that shows up. Matthew 2.23 about Jesus Christ. Jesus as a young child. Matthew 2.23 <clears throat> And it says, And he came and dwelt in a city called Nazareth, that it might be fulfilled which was spoken by the prophet. He, Jesus, shall be called a Nazarene, not a Nazarite. He's a citizen of he's a, a, a citizen of Nazareth, makes him Nazarene. And people come over here. Well, run over here to Numbers chapter six. The Bible says he's a Nazarite. No, it doesn't. And no, it's not. So this is not does not fall under Jesus Christ. Now six two. This person could be a man or could be a woman, and it's strictly volunteer. And this vow, the Bible says, you're to make vows very cautiously. This is someone who's going to stand out before God, before the people. So, it's a special office, it holds special deeds. In verse 3, he shall separate himself from wine and strong drink. No alcohol, no new wine, no juice of the grape. Well, Jesus did that anyway, but he drank new wine. That's what that's what the, that's what the wine is about. Is new wine, and shall drink no vinegar of wine or vinegar of strong drink. Neither shall he drink any liquor of grapes, nor eat moist grapes or dried raisins. Now, the Nazarite is forbidden by his voluntary will anything that has to do with the grape, whether the juice or the fruit thereof. This is like John the Baptist, as far as Luke 1 15, no strong drink. And it was told to Elizabeth his mother, thou shalt drink no wine, no strong drink. The more points to more John the Baptist than Jesus. All the days of his separation, you're separated. Shall he eat nothing that is made of the vine tree, grapes, vine, from the kirtle even to the husk, anything of a grapevine, the fruit, the vine, because you, you can eat the grape leaves, none of that. It's forbidden. All the days of the vow of his separation, there shall no razor come upon his head. Now let's go to Judges 16, 
17. And keep judges, because we're going to look at some things here. And my fight was all glued together again. And with that, I'm looking for another one here. I did not, I forgot to look up. Now look at Judges 13, verse 2, before we go to 16. And there was a certain man of Zorah, of the family of the Danites, whose name was Manoah, and his wife was barren and bare not. Well, here's one of those women that couldn't bear a child, and is going to bear a child. And the angel of the Lord appeared unto the woman, and said unto her, Behold now, thou art barren, and bearest not, but thou shalt conceive and bear a son. Now therefore beware, I pray thee, drink not wine nor strong drink, and eat not any unclean thing. For lo, thou shalt conceive and bear a son, and no razor shall come on his head. For the child shall be a Nazarite. There it is. Unto God. From the womb. Now this is not a voluntary one. This is a child that hasn't even been born yet. And shall begin to deliver Israel out of the hand of the Philistines. And we find out this is. This is Samson. Chapter 16. Now, Samson is a character that before you say, oh, I read about him, and he's found in, he in Hebrews 11, the men of faith. And he, uh, Judges 16, 17. He's crying before Delilah, his enemy. And he told her all his heart. And said unto her, there has not come a razor upon my head, for I have been a Nazarite unto God from my mother's womb. If I be shaven, then my strength will go out from me, and I will become weak and be like any other man. I'll keep your place in Judges. As we turn back to number six, you got to call a question about Samson because it says, All the days of vow his separation, there shall no razor come upon his head. Well, that's exactly what he said. Men with long hair are trying to put themselves as a Nazarite. But how often do these men drink alcohol? The Bible says this is not in Corinthians. Uh, uh, yeah, uh, Corinthians. I'm not going to quote verbatim, but you know, is it not against nature for a man to have long hair? This man that walks around says, I'm a Nazarite. He's to be a weirdo. And he's not to smoke pot and he's not to drink booze. He has totally given himself to God. And his long hair says, well, look at that. That guy loves the Lord and doing right. So no razor shall come upon his head. That's what Samson said. Unto the days be fulfilled. Well, it's coming to a time, the next verse, she's going to have his head, the seven locks of his head shaved. In which he, in which he separated himself unto the Lord. He shall be holy. <laughs> you read the life of Samson? And shall let the locks of the hair of his head grow. And yet God used him. And he is found in Hebrews 11, the great faith chapter, with Abraham, Isaac, Noah, Moses, and all the days of separation. Oh, wait a minute. Uh, yeah. And all the days that he separated himself from the Lord, he shall come at no dead body. Judges 14, 6. Let 
Judges 14, 6. In verse 5, at the end of the verse of verse 5, a young lion roared against him. And the Spirit of the Lord, the Holy Spirit, came mightily upon him, and he rent him as he would have rent a kid. He had nothing in his hand, but he told not his father or his mother what he had done. Well, that's kind of interesting because 8 and 9. And after a time, he returned to take her. He turned aside to see the carcass. You know what that is? It's a dead lion. The carcass of the lion. And behold, there was a swarm of bees and honey in the carcass of the lion. And he took there in his hands and went on eating from the dead lion and came to his father and his mother. And he gave them and they did eat. But he told not them. All right, so we come back over here in Numbers. Stay in Judges. we got a couple more places. All the days of the separation, he separated himself unto the Lord. He shall come at no dead body. He caused the dead body. He goes to the dead line and picks out some honey. But the Holy Spirit had him kill that lion. He's in trouble. But Judges is a book that they did whatever they wanted to do. He shall not make himself unclean for his father or for his mother. He made them unclean by giving them honey from a dead animal. That's a violation of the law. We read all over through Leviticus. An animal that dies of itself, he shall not eat. Or for his brother or for his sister. Or when they die, because the consecration of his God is upon his head. All the days of separation, he is holy unto the Lord. And if any man die very suddenly by him, any man die, he has defiled the head of his consecration. Then he shall shave his head in the days of his cleansing. On the seventh day shall he shave it. Judges 16, 9. The last, page, last we have reference in Judges. 16, 9, but before that, oh, I'm in the wrong chapter, that's why, 16, 19, she made him sleep on her knees, she called for a man, she caused him to shave off the seven locks of his head, and she began to flick them, and his strength went from him. She said, the Philistines be upon thee, Samson. He woke out of his sleep and said, I will go out as other times before and shake himself. And he was not that the Lord had departed from him. Once that hair is cut, it's gone. And he realized that the Bible records his hair starts growing back and then he gets victory over the Philistines with his own life. So besides the fact is that lion, God is still working with him unto Someone shaved his hair off. He didn't do it. Delilah didn't do it. She had somebody come in and do it for her and for him. And that hair began to grow. I mean, is it okay for a man to commit suicide and be right with God? The Catholic Church says no. Well, then why is Samson over there in, in Hebrews 11? So verse 9 again in Numbers, and if any man die very suddenly by him, and he has defiled the head of his consecration, then he shall shave his head in the day of his cleansing. On the seventh day shall it be shaven. Okay, Someone dies by this guy who, who said, listen, I'm going to be a Nazarite. It's done with. He's got to clean himself. He's, he's got to get right. He's got to have an offering. It didn't fulfill. He tried, but death. Okay. And on the eighth day he shall bring two turtles, two turtle doves, and two young pigeons to the priest, to the door of the tabernacle of the congregation. And the priest shall offer one for a sin offering, and the other for a burnt offering, and make an atonement for him, for that he has sinned by the dead, and shall hallow his head that same day. He shall consecrate unto the Lord the days of his separation, bring a lamb of the first year, of a trespass offering, but the days that were before shall be lost. 
because the separation is defiled. Okay. He makes a vow. He does everything he's supposed to do. Someone dies by him. Wakes up in the morning. His, his spouse has died. His parents have died. Somebody. <coughs> everything he's done is gone. And he didn't do nothing. And this is the law of the Nazarite. It's a law. When the days of his separation are fulfilled. He has set a date. He has come to that date. and Nobody's died by him. There's been no death. And he has fulfilled his obligation to God. He shall be brought unto the door of the tabernacle congregation. He shall offer his offering unto the Lord. One he lamb of the first year without blemish. For a burnt offering. One ewe lamb of the first year without blemish or a sin offering. All have sinned. Because he's dedicated himself as a Nazarite does not separate him from sin. Jesus was sinless with no sin. He couldn't have been a Nazarite. He couldn't. 33 and a half years. He never sinned. What's he going to bring for a sin offering? He is the sin offering. Behold the Lamb of God which take away the sin of the world. And one ram without blemish for a peace offering. You tell me that, God, that Jesus needed to make a peace offering to God? Really? The greatest peace that Jesus ever got in his life ministry here on this planet Earth was when he was in the garden with, with God and God strengthened and God sent an angel to comfort him during his misery. And a basket of unleavened bread, cakes of fine flour mingled with oil, and wafers unleavened bread, noited with oil, and their meat offering, that goes to the priest, and the drink offering. And the priest shall bring them before the Lord, and shall offer his sin offering and his burnt offering. He shall offer the ram for a sacrifice of peace offerings unto the Lord. Sacrifice, sin, he fulfilled his thing all the way through, but all have sinned come short of the glory of God. The basket unleavened bread, the priest shall offer also the meat offering and his drink offering. And the Nazarite shall shave the head of his separation at the door of the tabernacle of the congregation. He had his head shaved in a harlot's bedroom by a barber or somebody. He shall take the hair of his head of his separation and put it in the fire which is under the sacrifice of the peace offering. That's kind of particular. And the priest shall take the sodden shoulder, shoulder of the ram, it's in the pot, and one leaven, unleavened cake out of the basket, and one unleavened wafer, and shall put them upon the hands of the Nazarite after the hair of his separation has been shaven. And the priest shall wave them for a wave offering that's back and forth before the Lord. This is holy for the priests. That's the priests now. With the wave breast and the heave shoulder. And after that, after that, the Nazarite may drink wine. It's kind of funny because like John the Baptist Foretold like Samson's mother, don't you have anything to drink of that of that grape? Don't you have any strong drink? Don't you drink anything or have anything unclean? And we're not told, but possibly maybe John the Baptist was a Nazarite, holy unto God. And the only way he got his head to be shaved, when it came for his time to be fulfilled, is he had his whole head removed. This is the law of the Nazarite who has vowed and of his offering unto the Lord for his separation besides that his hand shall get. According to the vow which he's vowed, so he must do after the law of separation. Now, look at the law. I want to give myself to God and I want to give to all the glory. Is there anything wrong with that? And yet in the law, God says, you got to do this, you got to do this, you got to do that, you can't do this, you got to do this, you got to bring that, you got to do this. The law is strict. 
The Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto Aaron and unto his son, saying, On this wise, this is the way you do it, ye shall bless the children of Israel, saying unto them, The Lord bless thee, make you happy, and keep thee. He's going to keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon thee, and be gracious unto thee. And the Lord, the Lord God, the Father, the Lord God, Jesus Christ, and the Lord God, the Holy Spirit. There they are, Yahweh. One God, but three times. One times one times one. Lift up his countenance upon thee and give thee peace. Peace, that's one of the fruits of the Spirit. Gracious, that's what Jesus Christ has done for the sinner. And God will keep thee if you've done what he's provided for his son by us. And the Lord lift up his countenance upon thee and give thee peace. And they shall put my name, Jehovah, upon the children of Israel. And that's where they get the Jehovah Witness thing. And I will bless them. Well, you got to be Jewish. You got to do what God and God's love has to be upon you.